All right, thank you for joining me for another short talk. And friends, today, I decided to speak on Aliyah. I've had a lot of people ask me what it takes to make Aliyah, what conversions are accepted by the State of Israel, what conversions are not accepted, how does it benefit someone to convert conservative versus orthodox or reform if they're planning to immigrate to the land of Israel, what steps does someone actually take if they want to move to Israel to stay permanently? Well, first let's distinguish between orthodox, conservative, and reform conversions. Reform and conservative conversions are accepted by the Sochnut to immigrate to Israel. In other words, it's accepted by what's known in English as the Jewish agency, as acceptable institutions to convert through in order to immigrate to the land of Israel. However, the Orthodox, the Rabbanut, will not accept your conversion. So what does this mean? This means that you'd be able to immigrate to the land of Israel, but you will not be able to get married within the land of Israel. Now, there's ways around this in case you really wanted to marry someone over there, uh, or someone, if you found someone to marry you without having an Orthodox conversion, assuming that person's Orthodox, or even a secular Jew in Israel, because they're all under the rubric of the Rabbanut. What people do, they fly over to Cyprus, or somewhere else, get married there, and then bring their marriage certificate to Israel, and in that manner, the State of Israel accepts your marriage. So that would really be the only way for you to get married in the state of Israel if you have a reform or conservative conversion. Another thing is um, things like schools. If you have a reform or conservative conversion, your children will not be allowed to go to orthodox schools. They'll be forced to <clears throat> go to secular school, to public school. Okay? Now, orthodox conversions... The Orthodox have a deal with the Sochnut, with the Jewish agency, which is the institution that's basically in charge of people immigrating to Israel, that it's fine. Conservative and reform conversions could be approved by them. However, every Orthodox conversion has to be approved by the Rabbanut, by the Orthodox <coughs> or the Court of Orthodox Rabbis in Israel. Now, this is really the dumbest thing they could have done. Why? Because the only thing this ensures is that virtually anyone who converts to former conservative will be led into the state. However, not everyone who converts Orthodox will be led into the state or given citizenship. But only the rabbis they approve of, which is around 28 rabbis in the U.S. In other words, if someone converts through a halachic conversion, right? I mean, some could say even the conversions I perform, which I don't really perform them for people who live in Jewish communities, but for people who can't convert, right? Because the Rabbanut wanted to be in charge of validating all Orthodox conversions, they'll reject the vast majority of Orthodox conversions, while at the same time, the Sochnut, the Jewish agency, lets in droves of conservative and reform converts and uh, opens up the floodgates for the consequences that that brings. Now, only because someone has a conversion that is performed by one of the rabbis on the list, on the Rabbanut's list of acceptable rabbis, does not mean you can make Aliyah. This is a big false notion that people have out there. I hear rabbis online saying, oh, we offer conversions with a rabbi accepted by the state of Israel and they're charging all this money. Look, even though the rabbi or Beit Din who may have converted you is on the Rabbanut's list, the Rabbanut will not let you live in the land of Israel unless you can prove that you belong to a Jewish community for at least, for at least 12 months. This is something people don't know. So that means that someone could have a conversion performed by a rabbi on the Rabbanut's list and ultimately be rejected for Aliyah. And someone could also have a conversion 
with a rabbi that's not on the Rabbanut's list and be accepted for Aliyah. In other words, if someone converts with someone who's not on the Rabbanut's list and they actually become a member of a Jewish community, and mind you, to make Aliyah, you at least need the letter of two rabbis in your community speaking in your behalf stating that you are a member of the community if you don't have those letters you cannot make aliyah so even though your initial conversion may not have been accepted by the state of israel if you have those two letters acknowledging that the community has accepted you then they will accept you for aliyah or make it possible for you to reconvert quickly now what are the first steps if someone wants to make aliyah now, I'm speaking from personal experience. <clears throat> I made Aliyah. I lived in Israel for around five years. However, I was lucky to live in South Florida where there was a Jewish federation. And within that Jewish federation, there was <clears throat> um, an office of the Jewish Agency of Israel. So from there, you basically just show up, prove that you're Jewish, and it takes around... I would say four to six months to complete the process. Now, there are other ways. I mean, some people go through private organizations like Nefesh Benefesh, while at the same time going through the Jewish agency that uh, actually pay you to make Aliyah. I remember when I made Aliyah, they were paying around four to five thousand dollars a person for you to make Aliyah with the agreement with the verbal agreement that you would at least stay in Israel for three years. Now, most people don't know that the vast majority of people who make Aliyah actually return to the U.S., which is what I did. Um, so, yeah, so Nefesh Benefesh gives you money to make Aliyah. Um, nowadays, they give you less than before. A lot less. I mean, this is... I made Aliyah over around 10 years ago. Um, now, the Jewish agency itself, I mean, the state of Israel, will also give you money to make Aliyah, but in monthly payments. They will give you, if you're a single individual, now I'm talking about 10 years ago, around $250 a month for around six months. And if you're not on your feet in six months, they'll extend it for another six months. And um, they will also give you housing. If you make Aliyah without pets, I mean, I made Aliyah with pets, so I wasn't eligible. If you make Aliyah without pets, you're eligible to live in an absorption center. The problem is the average absorption center that they will put you in is in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> probably way up in the north. I mean, in any place they're trying to populate, right? Most absorption centers in Jerusalem and stuff will be completely sold out and you shouldn't even try. Also, if you make Aliyah early enough, the state of Israel will actually pay for your education. Not to mention, if you make Aliyah young enough, you have to serve in the IDF. However, if for some reason you're perhaps one or two years past the cutoff, which I believe may be 26, uh, to be eligible for that education benefit, you could take your case before a judge and see if they still give you the benefits. And I've met a lot of people who did that and it went great for them. It's not just university, but vocational school they'll pay for. Another thing, when you make Aliyah, they give you a six months upon for free, paid for by the state. Um, <clears throat> and that could also be extended if you don't feel you've gotten a grasp of the language in six months. What's upon? Upon is... It's pretty much a language school for you to learn Hebrew. And there's a list online of opans all over Israel for you to, to go to. When you make Aliyah, they pay for your trip to Israel. And when you arrive in the airport, you will be met from, by someone from the Jewish agency who will give you something called the Todat Oleh. It's like a new immigrant card, like a temporary card till you get your Todat Seut. And you're able to have that, I believe, for three months. After three months, you not only get your Todat Seut, you are also eligible for a passport. 
but a passport on paper. It's like a temporary passport. I don't think they actually give you a passport, an Israeli passport, till you're there maybe six or seven months. Um, there is another way to make Aliyah. Now, someone could make Aliyah from Israel. Uh, as a matter of fact, what some people do is that they convert in Israel. They move to Israel, um, enter a conversion program, and after that conversion program, then make Aliyah and just sort of, you know, seal the deal. Um, that is realistic if you're single, if you really, you know, really want to make Aliyah. There is no point in staying in the U.S. seeking a conversion. However, converting in Israel is not so easy. In other words, it's, it's possible, but the reason that it's difficult is that first you have to find, well, first you have to go to the Rabbanut and open up a tik, a file or a case with the Rabbanut. Then the Rabbanut will tell you to find the yeshiva that will teach you. Once you find the yeshiva that will teach you, uh, you have to find some way to support yourself for at least one year, which is uh, the minimum um, it takes in Israel to convert. Now, yeshivas in Israel typically will not let you live in the yeshiva if you're not Jewish. They will not let you live in the yeshiva. So what you have to do is have money saved because you're not going to be able to work. So that's why it's difficult. Now, there are some places. Um, I hear that now the yeshiva, Machon Meir, has an actual conversion program where the guys could stay there. But I'm pretty sure that's also not free. While yeshiva for Jews, hey, like if you don't got money, you don't got to pay. I mean, they'll tell you, you know, break them off some money and when you come across money. But um, that's just one of the perks of being Jewish. Uh, however, uh, I think it's easier for women. There's actually, I remember, I worked in outreach for a few years in Israel, for a bunch of years actually, and there was a seminary called Barot Bat Ayin. Um, and it was, it's pretty much like a hippie commune there that has a conversion program for women and the women are allowed to, you know, learn there and stuff like that and live there. And sometimes exceptions could be made. I have heard of exceptions being made, especially for women in places like Neve. Maybe they're, they're more, um, they're more lenient on the women just because it's more dangerous for them to be out there on their own. Um, And I really can't think about anything else regarding Aliyah. If, if I do, I'll put it on the bottom of this video. If anyone out there has made Aliyah, please feel free to comment and help those out there who want to immigrate to the land of Israel. I really don't encourage people to make Aliyah <coughs> um, for many different reasons. I think that if you want to be a good kosher Torah Jew, you should do it where you're at. Uh, I, that's just my opinion. Um, friends, for more information about everything Jewish, please visit BeJewish.org. Thank you.